Hey y'all. Have coffee on my lips. All right. <laughs> hey y'all. Hey. I'm Derek. I'm Jenna. Welcome to Fruition Farm. This is our first video other than our intro on this new channel. Uh, we're originally Flip Flop Barnyard. Uh, we have a lot of viewers on there, but we have decided to start a new channel to try to get more views. Yes. So, so this is our uh, other channel where there are some issues with the YouTube algorithm. Um, so we're trying to start fresh and see if we can make the algorithm happy. Yes. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how this works. But anyway, thank you all for watching. Welcome. We are in our garden today. Yay. Last year, this we were here. It was our first year gardening on this new plot of ground. We moved here in May, so we didn't have a lot of time to get any kind of soil prepped. This was a pasture. I took the tractor, scraped the sod off of it, put it in a compost pile to compost. We've been adding to that all winter. Uh, had a lot of weed issues last year. Yeah. We had a drought. A lot of thistles. A lot of thistles. We had a drought and we don't have water up here. So we're having to haul water back and up here to water everything. It was just a lot of work. We had a decent garden, a good, decent harvest. Uh, no complaints there. But we said this year we've got to do something different. And we've always wanted to do back to Eden gardening. So we have a friend from church who owns a tree company. He lives, he drives past our property quite often. So he has brought us loads and loads. <laughs> probably 150 yard, cubic yards of wood chips. Uh, we still got some left back behind y'all that he dropped off the other day. This on our garden has been composting for months now. Since last fall. Since last fall. Uh, we've spread it. Last year there were no worms in the garden. This year, everywhere you dig out a weed, there's worms, multiple yeah. worms. So the soil is totally different There's under here. There's a lot less weeds. So we covered this first with some um, hay and stuff that had composted and the cows had been trotting in and pooping in. So it was really rich. So mm -hmm. we put that down. Then we put the mulch on top and that's been several months. When did you do yes. January? Uh, February. February Fe probably in February. Yeah. And all of that, you can go back to our other channel, the Flip Flop Barnyard, and see all of that if you're interested in watching that and seeing what we did. Um, so we have just been coming up here now the weeds that have broke through and trying to get them out they come out a lot easier because they're coming up through the mulch, through the mulch. yeah um all that being said it's finally time to actually start planting yes and i'm excited um it, i am a tomato fanatic i have been for years and years um so i'm always starting new varieties and lots and lots of them so i started probably 250 ish tomatoes this year i started about 200 for us and a bunch for um well i was supposed to start 200 for us and i think i have 225 i'm not sure yeah. um and then a friend of ours we started a bunch of melons and tomatoes for him as well um so poppy i've given you your tomatoes but your melons yes. are coming um so we are started we have trellises back here we'll show you in a minute and yesterday we put in 44 cucumbers it was mostly sliced uh mostly pickling it was three varieties of pickling cucumbers of national pickling boston pickling and homemade pickles i've never tried the homemade, homemade pickles cucumber but it sounded good yeah and then i have four varieties of slicers i have straight eights market moors um silver slicers which are really cool they're kind of white looking and they're really really sweet the kids like them a lot and then um we tried them last year and then armenian i've never grown armenian but i buy them um, for salads at the grocery store, so I would rather grow my own because <laughs> yes. it's better that way. And you put how many seeds in? You direct and then, sow. So we put all those in and then we direct sow the rest of the row so we'll have succession planting and we put another 50, 50 seeds in the ground. Yeah. And um, eight of those 50 are slicers and the rest are pickling. So we are going to have, this is going to be the year of the pickles. Yes, exciting because we, we all love pickles. So we put in 60 tomato plants. We put in um, almost all of our saucing tomatoes. So I wanted to have a lot of saucing tomatoes and then we have a ton of slicers. Um, so I think I have five varieties of, of um, saucing plants too. So I'm super excited. Yeah, let's yeah. go over here and take a look yeah. at them. And then we'll show you we'll show you what we did yesterday and kind of give you a little bit more detailed of how we're planting them today. Yeah. All right. This is our cucumber row. We're doing it on trellises. This first trellis is a cattle panel and then the rest are all hog panels. They're a little shorter. All of our tomatoes are on cattle panels. But you can see we transplanted all of these. These are all pickling all the way down. Some people say you have to be really careful with cucumbers when you transplant because the roots don't like it and all that, which can be true. But um, in my experience, I've found that 
they do fine as long as you have rich soil to put them in and um, then you water them really well when you put them in. So what we did here is we uh, actually pulled back all the mulch and put down compost. So we've been composting over the course of the year, planted these in that compost and then put the mulch back around them to retain water. And they look really great. We did it yesterday, probably at the worst time of day to do it. It was between like one and four is like the worst time for sun and all of that. But that's what we did. It was exactly between one and four we came out here and they did fine. I watered them in and the, none of them looked to have any kind of transplant shock or anything. So super excited about that. And then on that very end down there, you can't see from here, but there, that's where I put the slicers. These are all pickling. And then in between here and there, we planted pickling, direct sowed pickling, and then a few more slicers on the other end. Then over here, we put in all of our main tomatoes are saucing tomatoes so we have 30 on each side um, we they're a little close um, I I kind of even though we're not doing square foot gardening per se we still like I really like square foot gardening um, which would be typically for raised beds but even in the ground we have found that if we use square foot gardening method it works really well so what we've done is they each tomato is 18 inches apart on each side and then we centered on the other side so these are 18 inches apart and then these are 18 inches apart from each other they're obviously not 18 inches apart here but that worked well we've done that in the past a lot um, if you want them not to be quite so close together you can always put them farther apart but we found that this works pretty well for us so we have done that all the way down we have two more rows <laughs> So we're poking holes for the tomatoes. Uh, we did this yesterday all with the post hole digger. I thought last night, I have a little handheld single man auger, it's gas powered. They both dig the same size holes, like six inches. So I thought, well, let's try this today. So I went down there and started digging all the way up through. It probably took me five minutes to poke all these holes. Then I gotta go to that side and do the opposite diagonal hole like with the tomato plants. But this is way faster and easier than last yesterday isn't it jack wait i think it so, took him 45 minutes or an hour yesterday to do it <laughs> yeah all by hand but yeah this thing is making a huge difference so He's we're just cleaning the holes out yeah taking the loose dirt out of the holes and then when we're planting we'll show you what we're doing but we're putting the plant in and then i'm taking at least one full shovel of straight up compost and filling in and jenna's packing it in around the tomato plant so we're planting them what six eight inches deep at least mm -hmm. and then uh We'll show you. And I think there, there's no like transplant shock mm -hmm. in any of our plants. And then we're so, putting the mulch around them. Yep, and then uh, mulching around them to help hold the moisture in. All the ground good. around here is dry. Like, but in this garden, this is the wettest. I mean, it's like, look at that. Super moist. Super moist soil still. So this is exciting. I mean, this mulch is, is gonna be great this year. here working most everybody is doing something the ones who aren't have been and are taking a break jeremiah's been picking up weeds jacob is well he's doing something keeping himself occupied kylie is taking a break she's been digging tons and tons of weeds and jenna and emma are about to start planting tomatoes and i want to show you how rough they have it i didn't tell y'all jenna fell out of the camper a couple weeks ago from the top steps down landed right on her back so she's been like for days we were worried she had actually cracked her pelvis or something but she's a lot better able to move around and stuff and, and do things but look how hard they have at planting these tomatoes so hard under a shade canopy with a three-legged shade canopy at that because but but it's working and sitting in a chair and emma Works is bringing tomatoes so we'll show you how we're planting these tomatoes and then uh, Jack and I 
are going to be filling holes. All right, I'm ready to plant these, and they have augered these holes out and cleaned them out for me. And I've got my plant, and I am going to simply pinch off any lower stems. I'm going to leave this one. I could take it off, but I'm going to leave it. And then I kind of loosen up my roots a little bit there, just a little, and then I'm putting it in the hole. And then Jack is bringing me some compost. All right, and I'm just gonna plant. Um, we could put a little more dirt and higher, but we're gonna mulch it, so I think it'll be fine. I'm not. I, um, tomatoes will grow roots. There, you can see their hairy stems. Can you see how hairy the stems are? There's little fine hairs all over the stems. Those will all root. So, um, some plants have smooth stems and they'll rot if you bury them too deep. But with these, you can bury them all the way up to the bottom leaves and they will just make a stronger root system and a thicker stem. So as they grow up, they'll just be a stronger plant. And then we do that and we're just gonna come back with the mulch and put around it and they'll be done. All right, y'all, we had Last year we went to my uncle's house and pulled 2,053 strawberry, actually pulled probably close to 3,000 strawberry plants out. Thinning his out, we brought back all of them to here. We laid out this black uh, landscape fabric, burned all the holes in it, planted everything, some we put in that bed, but we ended up with 2,053 of them. Problem is, the goats got up here, we only had electric wire around and they jumped through the electric fence and ate all the strawberries plants in one afternoon um, a lot of them they ripped out by the roots some came back but most did not and we're trying to get a good crop of strawberries going for next year so what we just decided to do here on the fly is roll this landscape fabric up the boys are going to dig all of these plants like there's a few like um, right here there's one and there and there anyway they're going to dig them and take them over here to this raised bed and put them in that way as they're putting off runners they can take root and increase our crop for next year so it's kind of a spur of the moment thing just something we all of a sudden decided to do but we think that it's a best chance to make a bunch of strawberries so so their boys are going to be working on that while we're still planting tomatoes <music> All right, we got all of these tomatoes planted. That was a lot of work. It took a long time. Our canopy kept blowing away, so we finally ditched it. Um, so we had to sit in the sun, but oh well, it's all right. Uh, we ended up doing, there's actually 61 per row, so that's 183 tomatoes. That's a lot of tomatoes. Um, but we put slicing tomatoes here, a few more right here on the end, and the rest of these are all like cherry or salad or grape tomatoes, all smaller tomatoes, and then of course our pasting tomatoes over there. So. We are really excited. They all look really good and I'm going to um, water them all in really good and then I think we're going to move on to some more, maybe some peppers or some okra and squash. All right, y'all. Sweltering. I don't know what the temperature is. In well the, up in, in the, the 80s. Well in the 80s. It's hot. Uh, all the tomatoes are in. We told you all that. We ran out of water partway through watering, so Jack took the water tank down to get it filled back up or at least enough water to get everything watered in today. So it's supposed to rain tonight. It says 100% chance of major thunderstorms, so. Could be good unless they're really bad. <laughs> yeah, well the mulch, that's where the mulch comes that's in. Mulch it really is. helps. Yeah, it does, so. Um, so we're getting ready to do okra right here. So yeah. what we do, we lay our rows out. We take 200 foot tape measures. Two 100 foot tape measures. <laughs> what? Two 100 foot tape measures. Yeah, two 100 foot tape measures right here. Pulled off of the tomato row and went across. I'm trying to video and show y'all. Drove a stake. The first spacing is four feet from the tomatoes. Then it's three foot row spacing after that. Then we, we drive stakes on each end of the garden. So then we take our other, one of our 100 foot tape measures and pull a straight line down, offset from the row since that's where we're gonna put our holes. But then we know our plant spacing all the way down. And okra, square foot style, is one foot. One per square foot. So we're going to... Um, go ahead. Rows typically say 18 inches to 24 inches. But in square foot gardening, you do one per square foot. We're not doing um, square foot, but we're doing in the row. But I have always... We're doing tended, linear foot. I have tended to space them that way anyway. So we are going to do one per, one per foot. Yep. Every foot apart. So. All right. 
I'm gonna fire up the fire the auger up. It's been yeah. working great. So the plan is our okra are tiny. They're not very big. Um, so he's going to just do drill the holes all the way down, and we're gonna fill the holes with compost, and then just come through and transplant the little teeny tiny babies yep. over and see what happens. That's what we're gonna do. Oh yeah, the mulch is super deep right there. Yeah. Okay, so we had a change of plans. We were gonna get the auger out, and then Derek was thinking, this is really deep mulch right here. So rather than get the auger, we're gonna have to dig through and do all that. He's just raking back the mulch with that little rake at every foot, and then we're gonna put a little compost in each hole and then plant in it. So we don't have to get the auger back out. So it's going really well so far. <music> It's been a long hot day. Yeah, it's starting to cool off now. The sun's going down. Yes, but we're famished. Yes, we have been out here for eight hours straight. Several of the kids went down and made sandwiches for lunch and brought them up and we picnicked and then went right back to work. So we got a ton done. We have 183 tomato plants in, um, 120 today, 122 today, actually. <laughs> Then we put in this whole row of okra. Which was um, 46 okra. Yeah, and then a whole row of peppers here, which is 46 peppers. 46 peppers, and then three more. Three more peppers here, and then ground cherries, um, dwarf tamarillos. Never grown them, but I saw them and I thought, I want to grow those. They look tasty, so I'm going to try them. They're there. We have one lone eggplant. I started a bunch of eggplant, and one sprouted, and it looks pretty rough, but we're going to give it a fighting chance. We put that in over there. We're gonna have to put up a trellis, but we put in um, tomatillos. Never grown tomatillos before, but we thought, let's try it. So I have three thriving and one that broke off that we're gonna we put in the ground anyway, and we'll see if it lives. Hopefully, Hopefully it, it will. We have um, we've up potted some squash because we didn't have time to put it in the ground. Not sure where we're gonna put it for sure. Um, this was our pathetic little greens row that didn't really do anything. Well, it started to, but uh, I think a bunny has been in here eating it down as yes. fast as it comes up. There are three rows of potatoes that are just, oh wait, two rows of onions that are kind of pitiful. <laughs> but hey, they're coming up. I started onions. And then we have three rows of potatoes and there's a few coming up. I think more will start coming up because they're just now breaking ground. Yeah. Um, then on the other side of that, we're getting uh, sweet potato slips. They're not going to be until the end of the month. So we'll be getting those in a couple weeks. And then we're gonna do a lot of squash over there. In this squash, pumpkins, and watermelons. Winter squash, pumpkins, watermelons, cantaloupe, all gonna be over there in that whole area. This area in between that the that between row here and the greens is gonna be one row of pinto beans, one row of green beans. Um, we're not gonna do a ton of green beans because we still have a lot jarred and cans that we haven't from two years that we haven't finished eating. So and then. And then we're going to do uh, summer squash are going to go over here. We're just going to do one row of summer squash. We can continually plant that if we want to. And then um, over there on the other side of the fa landscape fabric, we're going to have melons there. And on the other side, it's going to be flowers and herbs. And at the end of it, there is going to be some herbs. Um, and then there's a few potato plants coming up from last year where some potatoes got left in the ground. So we're just going to let them do their thing and see what they do. Lots of flowers, leftover tomatoes that I got to figure out what I'm going to do with, um, some basil and herbs over here, some just all kinds of stuff. So we've got to get, I think we, today is Thursday, so we're probably on Saturday we'll be able to come back out and um, spend another whole day out here working and get all that in. All right, y'all. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us today in the garden and we are excited to share our summer garden with you this year and we will catch you guys on the next video. See y'all later.